Welcome, one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. You know... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your support, because uh, I need it. You know, uh, they say that time heals all wounds, and they are wrong. <laughs> time can also fester all wounds. Then you gotta start lopping stuff off before it spreads. And I'm beginning to think it's time to reach for the bone saw. Because anybody who still believes Donald Trump at this point is gangrene on the body politic. <laughs> but gotta go yeah, with your function. Gotta go for the rest of the body. But don't give me the saw because I'm feeling a little shaky. <laughs> I'm about as shaky as I have felt since the night he won. Back then, my biggest fear was we had elected an asset of the Russian government who would sell out America at every opportunity just to save his own hide. My biggest fear now is that I was right. <laughs> a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people have been upset since Helsinki, where Donald Trump did not put America first. He did not say, hey, Putin, I know you messed with our election, and if you do it again, we're going to kick your ass. <laughs> Instead, Donald Trump blamed America and sucked up to Putin. My People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. You can understand why people are upset. That's like Paul Revere saying, the British are coming, the British are coming. This way, British, follow me. We'll get them while they're sleeping. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. <laughs> And after getting caught publicly betraying the country he's the president of, yesterday, Donald Trump cunningly fixed it. The key sentence in my remarks, I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. Okay, all good. <laughs> I see no reason why you would be a traitor. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant wouldn't. <laughs> But I can't remember. Now I can't remember. Anyway, fixed it. <laughs> but in the interest of fairness, because we're nothing if not fair at the late show, and I'm being told we're nothing. <laughs> anyway, here's what it would have sounded like if he had said what he claimed he meant. My People came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Okay. All right. That fixes. That fixes it. Just smooth. Smooth. That fixes the only word he claims he got wrong. I'm just curious, did he say anything else? I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely strong and powerful in his denial today, and what he did is an incredible offer. That's pretty terrible, but um, <laughs> you know what? Maybe he meant to say this. I have great confidence in my intelligence people, but uh, I will tell you that President Putin was extremely wrong and bad in his denial today, and what he did is a ground for war. Trump doesn't even understand why people on all sides of the political spectrum are horrified. This morning he tweeted, so many people at the higher ends of intelligence loved my press conference performance in Helsinki. That I believe. I'm sure the highest ends of Russian intelligence loved it. <laughs> and they loved it. I got, they absolutely, I gotta say, they, they loved it. I got, I got great reviews from Boris and Natasha. Carrie Russell, even that new Russian spy lady. What's her name? Mario Batali. She loved it. 
He followed that up with, while the NATO meeting in Brussels was an acknowledged triumph with billions of dollars more being put up by members of countries at a faster pace, the meeting with Russia may prove to be, in the long run, an even greater success. You know who didn't acknowledge the NATO meeting as a triumph? NATO? <laughs> you can't declare your disasters successes. Even members of Trump's own administration don't think this verbal turd is going to flush. One <laughs> official warned, people aren't going to forget about this. It will be in the top three worst moments of his presidency. Three. <laughs> three. 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 How, how would you even choose? I'd have trouble holding it to a Billboard Top 100. <laughs> and coming in at number 74, we've got Trump thinks Frederick Douglass is still alive. And this one, <laughs> this one is dedicated to little Dylan Pickle. So, <laughs> Trump's walk back yesterday was more of a shamble, and you'd have to be some kind of idiot to buy it. Jimmy, roll the idiots. I thought yesterday was a, a, a step forward, and I'm glad that it occurred. I'm glad the <clears throat> president uh, retracted or sort of corrected his statements. I'm just glad he clarified it. I think he cleaned it up today. I take him at his word. Which word? <laughs> Would or wouldn't? Because the president doesn't even take the president at his word. But there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for why Republican leaders won't stick up for democracy. They're scared. According to one GOP strategist, I'm furious Republicans are cowardly about Trump. But here is what they say in private. Trump is a disgrace. I give fiery press conference tomorrow saying that nothing changes. Trump remains nuts and remains president. A nut beats me in the next primary. So how does my political suicide help? Oh, it reminds me of the famous moving speech from Braveheart. They may take our lives, but we, they may take our lives then how does that help anybody? Let's be English. <laughs> That's nowhere near Scottish. That's nowhere near Scott. No, it's nowhere near Scottish. <laughs> One political analyst has a grim prediction for how this will all end up. Most Republican members are willing to admit the president doesn't operate in reality, but no, we're doomed in their next primary if they say so publicly. As long as that's true, we're headed for a world with zero accountability. That is adorable that he thinks we're headed for zero accountability. What other hot predictions you got? You think these smartphones are going to catch on? <laughs> but one... I'm hearing great things about penicillin. But one... Thank you. <laughs> penicillin fans here tonight. But... One Republican did question Trump's relationship with Putin, Illinois congressman and the next bachelor, Adam <laughs> Kinzinger. It's one thing to have a relationship with Vladimir Putin. That's okay as two leaders of big countries. But to have a friendship is different. I equate the relationship to, like, a prison guard for Jeffrey Dahmer, right? You can have a relationship with Jeffrey Dahmer as his prison guard, but don't be his friend's friend because he's a really bad guy. Okay. True, but in this analogy, Trump doesn't want to be Jeffrey Dahmer's prison guard. He had a press conference with Dahmer and said he believed him over the police. <laughs> Look, the cops are liars. My buddy Jeff made me a fantastic meatloaf, and <laughs> I'm having seconds. I'm having seconds right now. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I just checked the transcript, and I got one word wrong. I meant manloaf. <laughs> And I'm having seconds. I want to know what your secret ingredient is. It's so good. Mm. 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 But even Trump's best friends at Fox, the Fox and Friends, have been flailing a bit to defend Trump's comments in Helsinki. Well, look, there's a diff... You know, a, a lot of people get confused. I'm not saying the president's confused. Well, look, I look. If there's a diff, and just the press, and a lot, a lot of people have trouble lying. Not the president is lying, and a blah, 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 blah. is it over yet?
Uh. Well, Fox News might be struggling to come up with positive things to say about the president's performance in Helsinki, but you know who can always muster praise for the president? Is the folks at our in house news team, Real News Tonight. Jim? Welcome to Real News Tonight. I'm Jill Newslady. And I'm Jim Ankerton. Our top story President Trump met with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. That certainly happened. And what did you think of that, Jim? Why don't you say something first, Jill? Okay. Yeah. My mom always said if you can't say something nice, just let the man talk. Well, my mom always said it's not polite to talk with your mouth full, and it's time for my pills. Yeah. Those look good. Those look good. You bring enough for mama? No. Okay, I know. Let's check in with our number one Trump fan, Weatherman Sunny Showers. Sunny. We got a great show for you tonight. Anderson Cooper and Andy Cohen are here. Join us, won't you? 